जय श्री माता जी उपस्थित सभी साधकों का हम स्वागत करते हैं सामूहिक ध्यान की शुरुआत हम सामूहिकता में कुंडलिनी चढ़ाकर बंधन लेकर करेंगे सामूहिकता में तीन महामंत्र और उसके बाद श्री गणेश मंत्र का पठन करेंगे
सामूहिक चित्त को केंद्रित करेंगे सहस्त्रार पर परम पूज माता जी कृपावंत होकर हमें निर्विचार अवस्था प्रदान कीजिए इसी निर्विचार अवस्था में हम श्री माता जी की अमृतवाणी को ग्रहण करेंगे टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू वर्शिप श्री गणेशा इज अ वेरी अपॉर्चुन टाइम टुडे आई फील वे द इनोसेंस especially in the european and american countries is under attack there is no respect of the innocence no value for the innocence they don't understand how important it is for human life 
to have innocence being respected within themselves and also without. The human life is different from that of animal life. Animals are controlled all the time, or we can say they are under a complete imprisonment, you can say, under the will of Lord Sadasha. That's why it's called as Pashupati. But human beings have been given freedom to choose their asset, to choose the right, to choose the truth. Only through innocence they can achieve that. Can you remove this one from here because people can't see me, I think. Sorry. <coughs> Only the innocence is the source of joy. Without innocence you cannot enjoy anything fully. This innocence is today completely under challenge. And to finish the innocence in a very subtle way, there are very negative, cruel, criminal type of people who are working it out. Their minds, if you say possessed, it doesn't look like that. Because otherwise they are quite intelligent, they are also in a way creative of horrible things. So you can't say they are not intelligent, But from where do they get this knowledge of creating something so horrifying? In this Kali Yuga, as in Sahaja Yuga, everybody can take birth, there's freedom. It was not before, so much so that all kinds of evil people have taken birth on this earth. These evil people generate evil thoughts and people catch them and start get moving with it. Even a good person can get swayed by it. Even a saint can get swayed by it. So these forces of evil, the forces which are working out today are coming basically from these horrible people. Firstly, they might have come as false gurus, teaching something nonsensical, like Rajneesh. Then from some philosophers like Freud, who is still accepted in some countries as a great philosopher. and still some psychologists worship him as God. This Freudian knowledge was accepted without even thinking why Freud did that. Freud was a Jew and he found that many Christians tortured the Jews in America. This is another Antichrist activity. And when they tortured the Jews, this fellow thought that better to make them immoral, destroy their innocence. I don't know if he could understand to that point. And he started theories which were so shocking that normally any sensible person would never have accepted it. But so many people accepted in America to begin. In America, people take to anything very easily, which is absurd, which is stupid. I don't know why. There was special liking for such things. If Freud had come to India, 
they would have cut him into hundred pieces, I tell you, and thrown in the Arabic sea. They could not have borne this idea the way he had insulted the mother and her love for her child, the purity of her love. But Jews did not accept him, surprisingly. Jews did not accept. It's the Christians who accepted his idea and started destroying, displeasing Sri Ganesha. First of all, we have to understand we are born in a very precarious, dangerous times. At the time of Christ, there were very few people who followed him and they didn't understand much about Kundalini either. They had no knowledge. They had no knowledge that Christ was the incarnation of Sri Ganesh. But in the Christian countries only you find the insult of Christ, the insult of innocence, openly done, sometimes legally accepted. So when we are born under such horrible circumstances, we have to build up a great force ourselves of spirituality. When I came today, the, there was no breeze, no leaf was moving, but we were singing songs, and tremendous breeze was coming from you all. And that made me understand that this divine force has come into being. It is there. It's working. Not only that, but it's very powerful. Normally, breeze doesn't come to me, it goes the other way now. <laughs> but it was such a tremendous breeze that I had to hold somebody's hand and not a leaf was moving. So this collective force that you have, you must remember you have to fight it, not to run away, don't escape it. You have to fight it and you have to prove that innocence is to be respected. Adi Shakti first made Sri Ganesh. It was the first deity was created. Why? Because she wanted to fill the whole atmosphere with Chaitanya, with holiness, with auspiciousness. It is still there. It's still everywhere you can feel. Chaitanya is working, but it does not penetrate into the modern minds because modern mind doesn't know what is innocence is. They have no idea at all about innocence. The way they are going on everywhere is really something never happened on this earth. So, with the innocence comes moral life. Morality is the expression of innocence. Innocence shows a person that he is incapable of being immoral. Once I had gone to visit a ship, there was coming out in the customs. When I was coming in the customs, they said, did you get anything from the ship? I said, yes, of course. So they were shocked to know. What did you get? Some cheese and, and I, we ate also and we have some cheese with us. What else? Some books. Books? You are not supposed to get any books from there. I said, why not? So you have to pay customs. I said, all right, how much do we have to pay customs? You didn't read any rule about it? I said, no. I was innocent, I never read anything that you have to pay money for books also. I said, no, no, you are joking, go. <laughs> they thought this woman is so simple. She doesn't… I was the wife of the chairman of shipping corporation. 
going in a very big car. And they couldn't understand this woman is so simple that she's saying she has taken some cheese and, and she has taken some books. All these laws and regulations, people bind, they have also come from our idea of dharma. But the root of dharma is innocence. All laws are made to protect the innocent, not to punish only the criminals, but to protect the innocent person. So if somebody is proved to be innocent, your innocence protects you. I have seen many a times in my life, because I am so simple, I should say, that I had no problem, never, of anything. This is a kind of a very powerful vibrations that come from an innocent person, like from small children. Small children, if you see their vibrations, hundred grown-up surgeries may not have the vibrations of a little one, I can tell you this one. But once they start growing, then they become very intelligent, very grown-up, matured, and as if they have lost their innocence. This is no growth according to me. According to me, this is the death of innocence. To be cunning, to be clever, to be very intelligent, so-called, it is very self-deceptive. <coughs> For that, there is one blessing also. All those who have committed such mistakes, have to ask forgiveness from Sadashiva or from the Adi Shakti. But Ganesha doesn't forgive. That is one thing wrong with him, he doesn't forgive. If you have hurt him, he'll hit you back. As a result now we have diseases like AIDS, all other horrible diseases that you have, which are called as secret diseases, they are all because of the wrath of Sri Ganesh, immoral life that people have been leading, as if they have a permission from God Almighty to do what they like. People are so proud, such vanity, that they think whatever they do, after all what? Nothing can happen to them. Uh, with all these things happening in this world, people are still taking to immorality, very openly, boastfully. And I've seen that people who are elite, I've now been with the elite people, they crack such dirty jokes and they are so overly smart that you just can't bear their they are worse than the loafers on the street sometimes. So this disease has spread. Spread among older people more than among younger people, among children. So I think the people are now jealous of the little children. Otherwise, why should they attack younger children? What do they get out of them? In this Jealous attitude, they try to attack in a very dirty, funny manner. Then Sri Ganesh, he will never forgive these people, never, never, never. First of all, he'll expose them and he will punish them for seven lives. Seven lives their families will be cursed and seven lives they themselves will be cursed. That is his commandment. But if his mother says, all right, forgive, or the father says, all right, forgive, he obeys. He obeys his mother absolutely. 
never questions never questions never answers back whatever is told though he is in command of all the ganas he is ganadisha but before his mother he is just like a little baby he doesn't challenge the mother even if the mother tries to test him or tries to get puzzled he never doubt her. in her maya he cannot fall he cannot fall into her maya because he is so innocent he is like a churned out butter out of the butter milk so this butter can never get dissolved back in the same way this child which is pure innocence never can be contaminated by the maya of the mother maya is the process by which <coughs> you test people you have to test them see these days people are so clever so intelligent that it is beyond even adi shakti beyond any shakti the way they try to cheat so many have cheated me but they are back in their seats again that's done not by me but by shikrish he's just standing on all the sides if you try to do anything like that she'll hit you hard i can't help it now this one came on this earth as our lord jesus christ christ i think is more active than shri ganesh because kshanesha is fat he has a big belly i think it takes time to hit you. but this christ i don't know how he has hit people all over the world there are diseases 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 he has killed so many he is the one who used to ask for forgiveness for the people who killed him but he is so active i've seen that sometimes i tell people don't talk ill of me it's very dangerous don't talk against me in a very secret manner he exists and the way he hits people is sometimes is dangerous even my eyes get filled up with tears so i have to control both sides one is shri ganesha and the other side is christ there are two other people saint michael and gabriel we call them in uh, sanskrit language as bhairava and hanumana and they incarnated as buddha mahavira and buddha and the buddhist are really i tell you are another kind of perverts he was said buddha said that you should not get attached to anything you shouldn't get attached to your money to your <coughs> well to your family to an <coughs> that time the attachment was very great must have been <laughs> and this attachment he wanted them to remove from the minds of the people you cannot by removing your clothes by wearing those saffron clothes uh by shaving your heads by walking bare feet by torturing your body you cannot that's all outside that's not real detachment that's not buddha ta neither christ nor mahavira what they said that you should get detached from within 
to get detached from within is very different than to get detached from outside. It's not how much you starve that you become Christ or whether you move like <coughs> Mahavira that you become like Him or you get saffron clothes like Buddha, you become Buddha. So what a misconception they have of whatever was taught to people. That was the time when it was the days of tapasya, of penance. And that's why they said to do penance is best is to get rid of all these things so you will develop deeper into your being. Even in the Christian religion they started these nuns and these, what you call them, the fathers and the mothers and the nuns and all kinds of things. This is another artificial thing they started. By doing this, do you think you can become innocent? I have known nuns who are so horrible that you can't even look at them, they emit nothing but heat. And those priests, now we have heard about them, <coughs> the way they are removed, they are attacking the innocence of people. Buddhists are the worst, I should say, because <coughs> they say renounce, <coughs> renounce everything, all right? Renounce and beg. So, you renounce and renounce everything and beg for gold. What do you say to this kind of a contradiction? And we have there like Dalai Lama, he's a universal beggar. And people like it. People like if somebody is begging because their ego is pampered. <coughs> like he went to Los Angeles and all the actors and actresses had a very, very big conference and thought that by giving alms to this beggar, their innocence will come back. <coughs> Can you believe such a story? Any sensible people has to understand that by giving alms, how can your innocence come back? And so this fellow was again given lot of alms. He's got lot of gold and he's, he's really a <coughs> goldy man, all the time collecting gold from here and a gold from there and gold from there. Such people, incarnations who came just to teach, tell us to be detached, just to develop morality. If you are detached about your sex life, if you are detached about your financial side, if you are detached even from your country, then a detached personality of that kind will become innocent and there will be no quarrel. But it's happening the other way around now. <coughs> Same in the Islam. Whatever was taught in the Islam is taken on the other side. It cannot be in any way where Muhammad Sahib was only insisting on morality. Any kind of immoral behavior he didn't want to have. He did say at that time you can marry more women because there are more women. But he never said, you become prostitutes. You lead a life of sin. That was just a samayacha, that was only that time, that was the problem, he said, all right. For example, divorce was not allowed at a time. But in Sahaja Yoga we do allow divorce. But I have seen that without divorce they can't live, I mean, just an impossible situation because also women sometimes are extremely, extremely cruel and men sometimes are extremely peevish. Under these circumstances, how can they be companions? More women are immoral in this matter, I should say. 
First it was the men who used to do immorality. But not the women who are not only innocence but also Shakti, are trying to get into some sort of a shamelessness, no care of their own innocence. Their innocence is the Shakti. If a woman is not innocent, how can she have Shakti? If she is leading an immoral life, then her Shakti will be finished. Only her morality is her Kashi Ganesha, which emits this purity in her. Now, I feel that the way people are pumping our heads with ideas, especially from Hollywood. We accept them. And we forget that we are just hurting Sri Ganesha and he'll come back on us. It starts at a very low level when we start hating our children. The problem starts when we don't understand our children. I mean, in England they say that two children are killed every week by parents. This kind of attitude towards children, first of all they should not produce. If they have produced, then they are Sri Ganeshas. They have to respect, they have to love and they have to encourage. But to spoil the children is also another kind of negative force, I think. Some people spoil their children. Ganesha can never be spoiled. You cannot spoil him because he is beyond Maya. But the way people run after their children sometimes is shocking. To them that is the greatest achievement they have got that they have a child. Even in a place like India, where it's an overpopulation. To them, their children are like, I don't know what, so attached. So this is a new attachment that has started, which also gives you a kind of an immoral life. Because you are Sajogis. For people who are Sajogi, the, all the children of the world are their own. Not only your own children whom you love. All of them are Sri Ganeshas. Of course, if there is somebody who is not a good child or you find it difficult, it's all right. But otherwise, all the children of this world are your own children and you have to love them as you would love your own children. Christ has said, love thy neighbor as thyself. I don't know why he said it, because in all Christian nations, neighbors are the biggest problem. <laughs> Even here. <laughs> so I say, love thy child, Lie, love other children as thy children. Let's start at that point, maybe after that. But normally, there are places where they won't allow you to take a flat because you have children. I mean, imagine. Only unmarried people <coughs> or barren people can live there. And also compulsory is that you should not have any child. Even today you may not have child, but once you live there, you should not have any child. If you have a child, then you are ousted. Can you imagine? About only Thirty years back, people had twelve children, fourteen children, they were competing in that and lived very happily. And these days, the problem has become like this, that you should not have many children. Those who started the problem are having no children at all. Those who said should be controlled, see, anywhere in the West, the growth is minus. Who is doing that? Sri Ganesh. You don't want children? All right, don't have. 
Except for Sahaja Yogis, nobody gets child. In this place, Mohan got his child first, so in the whole village there was a celebration. There has been no child born here for years together. But then again the problem is like this. When I say this, I find Sahaja Yogis go to another extreme. They are stuck to their children. Stuck actually is the word. Which is very wrong. I'm not saying you should neglect your child in any way or you should uh, uh, in any way beat them or trouble them or this thing. You must love them in such a manner that they should know if they do anything wrong, they lose your love. Because for children, love is the most important thing. They should know this, what you don't like. You should tell them what you don't like. And you'll be amazed how children will not do anything that will make you unhappy with them. Now that's a trick I think one has to learn. This is the best way to grow your children. I'll tell you a story of my own daughter. Went to Delhi and all the girls were having sleeveless blouses. So she asked me, uh, I want to have sleeveless blouses. She was grown up, she was going to college. I said, all right, have it, whatever you like. They said, by the way, why don't you wear sleeveless? I said, I feel shy. Then why should you allow me? This is no criteria. Whatever I ask, you say yes to me. I'm not that grown up. <laughs> Even my granddaughter, she was here. She asked me, Nani, why do you wear always blouses with sleeves? I said, do you know these are very important chakras, the most important chakras for our body. If you keep them open, these two or these two, then you'll have problems. My goodness, sh I must wear this now, full sleeve. Immediately they understood. So something deep, if you tell them, in a deep manner, which is respecting their innocence, they will improve. For example, a child comes, spoiled child, he does very well in the class and all that. Now one way is to beat him up, shout at him, scold him, there's that one. Another simple thing is to talk to him, see, supposing you stand first, supposing you get good marks, you become a great man, how proud I will be. Everybody will be proud of you. But supposing you do not, then they'll think, oh, he's a useless fellow, he'll have to beg on the street. Immediately will change. The handling of the children is very important. Innocence is to be handled in a very delicate manner as you would handle a beautiful flower. It's a flower. As flower has fragrance, also innocence has fragrance. Now this Ganesha was made out of the Mother Earth. He was made out of Mother Earth. Mother Earth is the essence of innocence. See this Mother Earth. We don't look after, we don't give her water, we don't do anything for her, but how she is trying to enrich our life, how she is trying to cool us down how she works out for us things which normally cannot be improved. To respect this Mother Earth 
is very important for all the innocent people. They do. I've seen children, they respect the Mother Earth. They like to play on the mud, they like to play on sands, they want to build castles. No, give me a to go for no, this very poor. And all kinds of things they do with the Mother Earth. But they are not attached, that's one thing. They are not attached. They'll build a castle, all right, finished, now finish this. Then they go to the airport, there they find something, they all join to make it a joy. They go wherever they go, they find it easy to make that thing for their enjoyment. To them, enjoyment is important. To them, yesterday as I said, time is not important. How much you enjoy is important. Time is a headache for the grown-ups. Children don't worry. You take them somewhere in a nice place, so they don't want to come away. You ask them, let's go home. Why? For what? Why, why should we go home? They can't understand. They love all that is natural, all that is beautiful. They don't know the value in the money form. They know the value of something in the form of love. Now I've seen myself. You see, if you give something to children, they keep it there, even surgeries, and they'll show you, I've got it. See, the essence of Sri Ganesha is pure love. The pure love of this Mother Earth created Sri Ganesha or Adi Shakti created out of the pure love. But surprisingly, Sri Ganesha was created before the Mother Earth. So how it is? So first he was created only as the Logos, as you call it or we call it, the Brahmanad. Omkar. First he was created only as the sound of Omkara. Then this Omkara was covered with the Mother Earth to make Sri Ganesha. So, Omkar is so important because it has got in it all the three powers, a uma, a uma stands for the Mahakali, Mahasaraswati, and Mahalakshmi powers. All these three powers exist in this Omkara. So, in a dormant form, we can say those three powers exist in Sri Ganesha. So when we try to harm him, then we are harming the Shakti within us, which is Omkar, which fills the whole universe, which fills all the vibrations. In the vibrations, these powers move. These three powers fill up every vibration. That's why they know, they understand and they work out the whole thing in such a manner that supposing now somebody has broken his legs, take it like that. Now I sit down here and be, give a bandhan. Immediately, immediately, a power is sent, immediately. Somehow, it's faster than all your communications that you use. And immediately things work out. How it works out, no, it's a very complicated stuff. But it's also very uncomplicated because it is the work of Sri Ganesh. 
He is not interested. You see, if there is any problem, all right, like making a little fort on the seashore, all right, he will melt it, finish it back again. He is not attached. So what should we do to show our gratitude to this little child? Supposing you say to a child, thank you, you say, eh? what would you say? Won't understand, child, children don't understand, why should I, uh, we thank them? We teach them, say thank you, so even if they have to say sorry, they'll say thank you. <laughs> because they know only one word, thank you, so they say thank you. Now these children, how they play in the same way this Omkara plays? Most detached, as they call nishkriya, to the power, means doesn't do anything. Nothing, just paying attention. If somebody gets cured, gets saved, somebody gets uh, vibrations, who does it? Sri Ganesh. But he is not attached. You know. He is not attached. He doesn't want any credit for it. It's his job. He will send one gana, all right, go to fast. They run fast. More than any one of your modern, the most modern vehicle that you have as aeroplanes or anything, immediately I am telling you, again the word is that. Just as if you press the button, it works. But on some people it does not. If they are surrounded by people who have no faith, if they themselves have half faith or something, he is the judge of your faith in the mother. Because he has absolute faith in his mind, absolutely. In the same way those who have absolute faith in his mother, he looks after them. He really looks after them. Also he destroys. Once a person told me about a minister in India, a very nasty fellow, very corrupt, immoral, everything put together. He was going on, carrying on. But this was a nice Sajogi, very good Sajogi told me that this man has now started troubling him and wants him to do something dishonest. I said, really? I said, really here and there, this great minister had to resign and go away. That moment, the fact, I can show you so many such things, but the faith of Sri Ganesha is tremendous. He never doubts and he is not attached. So many people, sometimes, Mother, you know, we did this, we went there, we had to climb up so much and then we gave realization only to one person. Finished. What's the use? Don't give any realization. I've told hundred times to people, if you think you're doing any work, better not do it. It's no good doing such work. If you're attached to it, then better not do it. You do it for fun, just for joy, just for faith in you. With this absolute faith you never feel fatigued, you never feel tired. You see Sri Ganesha's. All these bandhans, who carries? Sri Man Ganesh Mahodai. He with his big belly just orders his people. And these Ganeshas, Ganas are the most competent people you can find. You get me any competent person, any scientist, no one can beat them. How can they cure a person? Say a lady had a son in Mexico who was sick and he had a fatal disease 
which was in their family, but they always used to get it at a, an age when they were very old. But he was a young boy studying in Harvard. She wrote to me three letters and in these three letters she said, what should I do, should I send him to you? And I was, you see, Ramir, jumping from one tree to another tree. I said, where will you meet me? But I just thought of it. And fourth letter comes in that she took him to the hospital in Harvard uh, University and there he, she took him to some other hospital. And all the hospitals declared that he's absolutely all right, he's completely cured. But your faith, her faith has worked. It is the mother faith has worked for the son. It's very easy to doubt me, it's very easy. It's a slippery ground, I tell you, very easy to doubt me. Because people doubt people for what they wear. You know, they may say, why was she wearing such an expensive fur? This is a selection of Mr. Guido the Great, not mine. He forced me to buy this. <laughs> what can I do? Well, I'm not attached, but to keep his uh, spirits all right, <laughs> I wear it just to please them. Even children you will be surprised. They feel very pleased if you do something that they like. They are very, very… They, I shouldn't say intelligent because I don't like that word very much, but I should say very subtly understanding things. One of my granddaughters, eldest one, she's a gem of a gem. She… I took for her Wendy's house and she built it up. And my daughter is quite tall, she called her, Mummy, come to my house. So this daughter of mine went there. And she entered inside the house and she broke the whole thing. So my granddaughter came to me, see, look at your daughter, you have taught her no manners of any kind. I said, why, what happened? She comes into my house and asks such an unmannerly question, what have you got for me to eat? Do you do that, going to somebody's house to ask such a question? And when I said, you can't ask such a question in somebody else's house, she laughed so much that she broke my house. <laughs> Is this the way to behave? You have never taught them, Grandma, you have taught us everything nice, you have never taught her how to behave when you go to somebody's house. You see, so innocent. So innocent the whole thing was. That just to please her, even a small thing, if you do, you can please them, very simple. Now his power is Kundalini, but this is another problem. She is the power of Sri Ganesha and without him she won't rise. इसी अवस्था में हम कुछ समय निशब्द ध्यान में बैठते हैं
परम पूज्य श्री माता जी आपकी परम कृपा में हम सदैव सामूहिकता से जुड़े रहकर आपके श्री विराट और श्री विराटांगना स्वरूप के आशीर्वाद को प्राप्त करें हम सदैव निरानंद अवस्था को प्राप्त करें श्री माता जी आपकी परम कृपा में अपने प्रकाशित ज्ञान से अनन्य भक्ति में उतर कर हम सहयोग का प्रत्येक कार्य करें और उस कार्य को करते समय हम अकर्म अवस्था को प्राप्त करें श्री माता जी आपकी परम कृपा में हम सब प्रकाश बनकर इस विश्व का आध्यात्मिक उत्थान के मार्ग में मार्गदर्शन करें कृपावंत होकर हम सबको कुशल संभाषण दैवी कूटनीति प्रभावी व्यक्तिमत्व और विवेक प्रदान कीजिए श्री माता जी आज का यह सामूहिक ध्यान हम आपके श्री चरणों पर समर्पित करते हैं कृपावंत तो होकर हम सबको और इस विश्व को आशीर्वादित कीजिए परम पूज श्री माता जी को प्रणाम करेंगे और सामूहिकता में कुंडलिनी चढ़ाकर बंधन लेंगे आज का यह ध्यान सत्र यहीं पर संपन्न होता है जय श्री माता जी